A left field whiskey for a left field whiskey category. Today I'm looking at Star Wars Left Field Single Malt. Welcome to Drown Fine Whiskey, my name is Matt and like I said today I'm looking at Left Field Single Malt coming out of Star Wars in Australia. So let me get this into the glass. Now if you're new here, scroll down, hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button. I put out a new whiskey review every Wednesday and a new cocktail recipe every Friday, so subscribe and you'll see them all. Now I say this is a left field whiskey because to me I didn't really know that Australia was making really good whiskies up until this year. I mean it came out of the left field. And while I haven't tried a huge amount of whiskies from Star Wars, the ones I have, I've really enjoyed them. And I think they're not afraid to experiment with their whiskies. They're using uh, French oak barrels, wine barrels. They're really kind of good in terms of experimenting with their whiskey and putting out something that's kind of unique and different. And I mean, just looking at this bottle, like, it's quite interesting and unique. Like, uh, I'll show you what they've written here, but it's very clever, it's kind of funny. It shows that they're just a little bit different. It shows that they're just kind of having fun with the category, having fun with the idea of producing whiskey while still making really good whiskies. Now, from their website description, they say that this whiskey was meant to be easy to drink, easy to enjoy, and easy to use in cocktails. And they also describe that they differentiated from the Nova whiskey, which is also a single malt and also aged in X wine casks by using a brewer's yeast to give a different profile to the whiskey they actually produce and they use French oak casks instead of Australian oak casks to give a different bit of an influence. If you're not familiar with different oak varieties, oak from different parts of the world will give different flavors to the whiskey. So French oak, for example, is gonna give a lot of more spicy notes, a lot of deep, kind of rich, tannic notes to the whiskey. And because this was an ex-French oak wine barrel, I expect to give a lot more of that berry influence as well as the spice. So that's enough talking about this whiskey. Let's get into the nose. Hmm, I'm getting red apple skin, like right off the nose, like it's really, it's burnt. Like red apple skin, like that kind of not a really sweet red apple, that kind of red apple that's a little bit more muted, like it's not approaching a green apple, it's definitely in red apple territory. There's a really nice kind of rich red apple note coming through, that's sitting on top of some kind of berries, um, kind of like a like a candied berry, not like a like a natural berry sweetness, but like if you imagine a hard candy, that's a berry hard candy, that kind of sweetness, that kind of like candied berries, that's definitely coming through here. Mm. And those notes on the nose are sitting on top of kind of a like a nice bit of vanilla sweetness in there, some nice, definitely some oak spices coming through. That French oak again, it's quite apparent, it's quite noticeable of an impact. It's just a nice kind of. There's almost like a like a chocolate note that's coming through. It's, it's definitely like a sweetness, like a rounder, richer sweetness that's coming through. All right, that's, I think, enough about the nose. Let's go in for the palate. Okay, again, that candied note is coming through. It's definitely candied berries. It's not like rich, juicy, fresh berries. It's definitely candied berries. It's not a bad note, it's just a different it's not like a rich, juicy berry, it's definitely that candied note. I'm also getting more of that oak, maybe some kind of dried fruits like sultanas, definitely that's maybe coming through. It's not an overly complex palette, like there's nice kind of rich notes in there, so I'm gonna go in again and see if I can find anything else. Okay, second go around, the oak, those tannins, much more apparent, much more drying than the mouthfeel. There's almost a bit of like tropical fruit. So if you imagine if you've had like a dried mango and you just, you know, it's kind of taken some of that moisture out of your mouth and it's left with that kind of tangy, tingly kind of mouth feeling. It's that kind of sweetness. It's that kind of lingering note in there. And again, there's not a huge amount of depth in the palate. It's a nice whiskey, don't get me wrong. It's an easy to enjoy whiskey. It just doesn't have a huge amount going on in the palate. Like it hits the few notes it's hitting hits them well, but then it stops. So I think I'm gonna go in again, but I'm gonna look at the finish. Okay, as those kind of candied berry notes fade away, that spiciness does linger on, 
the vanilla makes a bit of a reappearance, like there was some vanilla in the nose, a little bit of it in the palate, there was much more underneath all the other flavours. In the finish though, it's become much more apparent. Vanilla sweetness is there, definitely. And again, it's just, it's just not a huge amount going on. I'd say it's a very short finish. There's not a huge evolution going on in there. And that's not altogether surprising to me. This whiskey, as they said, it was meant to be an easy to drink, easy to enjoy whiskey. They weren't aiming to make something that was so complex that you would have a huge amount of work picking out all the notes. They were making a whiskey that you could throw into a cocktail, that you could enjoy, you could do something with, you could have a bit of fun with. Like, and I think they've hit on that. I'm not sure I'd use this as an introductory whiskey to a brand new whiskey noob. Like, that tannic note, the dry note, it might put some people off. Like, it's not putting me off because I'm used to that note, I'm used to you know, that kind of oak spiciness, that oak tannic note. I think it'd be very good in a cocktail, like that drying tannic note, if you balance that with lemon juice and like a whiskey sour, that could be really good. If you balance it with um, vermouth in a Manhattan, that could also be very good. So I think it's definitely a versatile whiskey that could you be used in a variety of different ways. It might not be one though to use to introduce newbies to the category. And I actually just had a flash there um, of almost like beer. Like they say they use brewer's yeast in here uh, during the fermentation. And I <laughs> just had a flash of if I just had had a beer maybe like five or six minutes ago and that lingering kind of barley, that that, that kind of, you know, the, 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 the sweet kind of cereal notes to get out of a beer, that just hit me there. So there's definitely a little bit more maybe to unpack in this whiskey but it's not overly complex. And so I think that's where I'll leave it. I mean, if you can pick this bottle up, it's a good whiskey, don't get me wrong. It wouldn't be the one I'd reach to first. I mean, Star Wars Nova, I think is a better expression. It's a bit rounder, it's a bit richer. It has a bit more kind of, um, of those red berry notes, a bit fresher of those red berry notes. But still, I mean, if you like, if you like what they're producing, if you like red wine aged whiskies, I think you might find something to enjoy here. So I'm going to see if I can find more to enjoy, and I'll see you next time. Sláinte.